So today we're in chapter five of data transformation, and the learning objective is out rows of a data frame with DP, with deep higher filter function, uh, sort rows of a data frame with deep higher range function, and pick out columns of a data frame with deep higher select function, modify columns of a data frame with deep higher mutated function, group rows of data frame with deep higher group function, then apply function to column of a group data frame. We did, uh, the, the, the summarize function, then streamline data transformation with a pipe um, operator. Uh, so next thing, that's the introduction. So um, I believe you all have a uh, Ediverse installed. So I would just be more of a discussion. So I don't know everything. So um, I think that's the best way to really work. So. Um, can you see my screen? Oh, it's visible. Can you see what I'm doing? Like, like I'm scrolling down. Uh, well, we can't see you scrolling down, though. It's kind of oh, that's and yeah. Prerequisite. Okay. Sorry. Can you see the white um back, the white um book, uh data transformation the HTML the book uh, the book club the Alpha Data Science book club, um book down uh site or is it my R Studio um interface you're seeing right now? Look at them please. Your your R Studio interface. Actually okay, well that's the issue now. Okay. Then I'm not changing the right thing. Okay, so I believe you all have um uh, installed. Then we'll also be needing a data set as the um MIC flight thing. I the data set is about the um flight that Took place in 2013 um, in the US, around New York City in 2015. So I have that installed already on my R Studio, uh, R on my laptop. So I guess you, we all have that also, right? So well, I do. Um, okay. So um, the first things first, um, we would be um, viewing the flight data. Using um using the function view and view, view has to be in capital letter or you get an error when you run it without using the capital letter. So next thing is um how to go about picturing the um the data sets. We use the number of rows, the, the number of rows function, then colon function, then the length function, then dimension function. These will tell us um number of rows and number of rows from what we've done is about um 336,000, number of columns around 19. Then we have the length to be, be um, 19. Okay, okay, let's not run the flights. Okay, flight not found. Okay, because I'm not installed that thing that flight is happening. It's taking a while. Oh no, it's not supposed to install again. Okay. Okay, so maybe I should. No, 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 it's supposed to do this again. Okay, the next thing is we would be. Why is this happening? Library. Okay, this is it. Okay. Okay, yeah. So this is the data set. Uh, the next thing is to view the data set. This is what that set looks like. Um, we have the year colon, the month colon. The day colon, the part of time colon, schedule department, the part of time. And we can also find out more about what the data is about, like the, the metadata file or the data description by um, using the question mark flight uh, and help viewer to get info about all the variables. So please, one minute. Okay, 
cube. So for the colon names, we also use the, um, the colon name function and we will have that there. Now we're going to the comparison and um, local operators. Okay, for we have them, you know, the uh, checking the logical operators such as um, the greater than sign, the greater than or equal, to, equal to, the less than, less than or equal, the equal, not equal. There's something about the equal sign has to equal, um, equal signs to mean equality. One sign is also known as this, as an assignment operator in in R. Uh, the next thing is we can use this to compare numbers. Let's try it out. For one greater than two, it's going to give us false. Like you can see the output. The output is showing um, what the result will be. Okay, so um, compare characters. Now we're trying to this, we'll get this example on um, comparing characters. And um, doing this, we find out that um, most of it's, um, sorry, at this part, I think of why, sorry, I have a question here. Why does it seem more like um, for when we say a greater lesser than b, why does it give true? Like why is it you have different answers? Like what is it taking characters for? Does anybody have an idea? At this point, I really didn't get why it was like this. So I was getting this false, false, true, true, false, false, false true. Since they were characters. Was there um, was there were a and b assigned values earlier? That we didn't no, no, know no. about. No, no, no. Twenty huh. percent value earlier. I'm not sure then. Okay, I was thinking again. Yeah, maybe because maybe our knows um, A, B, C. Maybe it's looking at it from the other A, B, C, D, E, F. Maybe that's why. Is that? Does anybody have any idea? Another person. We don't know about why it's you know, the first true true. This part I really didn't know why it was in this answers. Let me go to the next thing. That's case matters when comparing um, characters. English lowercase letters are less than uppercase letters. Okay, okay. So I think it has to do with the odd order. It can be equals to B. So that's why we have false. And A is not B. That's true. I'm going back and I'm trying to understand why then A greater than B, that's false, but A greater than or equal to B, that's false. A less than B, that's true. Okay, yes, I, I think it's the order. A um, less than or equal to B, that's true. Okay, okay, okay. I think I get, get it now. So um, for the case matters when comparing characters for English, lowercase letters are less than uppercase. So um, that means A greater than um, case letter A greater than case A is false. So we have this, um, this output when I run that code, false, false, true, true, false, and true. That's for A greater than or equal to A, false, A lesser than A, true, and the rest down there. So we can change case when comparing characters. So say um, we want uppercase A to become lowercase A, we just need to use the function to lower. So lower will change characters to lowercase, and so upper will change characters to uppercase. Let's give that a try. Yes, and that have that worked out. So um, now we're going to logical operators proper. The, um, sorry, does anyone know what this symbol is called? I think it's, it's, in English, I think it's and. Uh, is it poison or something? Somebody help me, please. Yeah, I think um, the, the they call it an ampersand or an and. Okay. okay. And all expression must be true in order to return return true. So um, true and true, we return true. And true and false will be false because um, one of it is false. 
So if we have two conditions where um, one of them is false, then it will return false. But if we have two conditions and both are true, then it will surely return true. Okay, so um, the next uh, chunk. And we have the or um, operator. This means one or more expression must be true in order to return true. And um, operator is the key above the return key, not the lowercase l. So the, the operator is actually a symbol, not the lowercase l. I think that's just more of a caution. So true, true or true brings back true. Um, gives an output true. True or false give an output true. But if any of the conditions are met or are true, it returns true. So if one of the conditions is true or is met and the other is false, it still returns true. Now, the exclamation mark has the represent not or negates negates negate negates the expression. Okay, negates the expression. Okay. When you say not true and it gives false, not false gives true, then we have two negate um two not operator would turn true because one of the um operator will um will turn the false output okay when we have the not operator for true we run this it gives a false and when we have the negative uh, not operator for false gives true so we have um to give us back a true so for the next chunk sorry i next chunk okay Assigning objects. We know about assigning objects. But um, to assign objects, there's a shortcut for, I think there's a shortcut for the assignment of Peter. Um, I think it's push it I. There is a shortcut for assigning operators. I can't remember now. Does anybody know it? Anybody? Is it a discussion? I was expecting we would all contribute. I saw what Code 5 did and they were contributing. Someone was saying something. Yeah. I, I, I think that, that's it though. Or well, you probably use the equal to sign. Okay. Yeah. It, it's Alt. alt for Windows is Alt, then I think the iPhone sign. And for Mac, it's Option, the iPhone sign. Um, iPhone symbol. Uh, let me go back to R. Okay. Um, next thing, the, so if you use the um, auth function and I think you should get the shortcut. So let me try that here. It works. Did anybody try it? Did it work? Yeah, it's a work to my head. Nice one. That's okay. Nice yeah. So um, also for the DPI, okay, we don't get there. I'll also mention a shortcut for the type operator too. So um, for compare objects and numbers, uh, let me run this. A, we have assigned A to be one. So A less than three, we know that will be true because one is less than three. A greater than three, we know that will be false because one is not greater than three. A equal to, equal to three, that's the, um, the equality sign. So that will tell us A is not equal to three, so it will be false. A not equal to three, that will be true. So let's run that. So we already have our answers there. So comparing object um, A um, less than B, that'll be true. We know we've assigned um, we've assigned B to be five. So um, and A is actually assigned to be one. So one um, less than five, that's true. That's when we're comparing objects now. We've assigned one to object A. So we're comparing objects and we would also get those um, output A equal to B, then we get false. A greater than B at false because one not greater than maybe I should just add that here. One is not greater than than um, five. So to the next one, I'm comparison and logical operators. It's similar to what we just completed, but this time around we have the um, or and the and um, operator. So A 
lesser than greater than three will be false because we know a is actually one and you can see it on the we can see it on the um, environment plane. a is um is one and b is actually five and a greater than three that condition is um true or false a less greater than three okay that's true then b greater than three Lesser than B, that's false because A is actually one. And B greater than B, that's true. So we have a false and a true. And from what we've done previously, we know that um could quickly do that again. Um true. Could, true is also we can also write true as um D, but for the sake of um make it easy to read. Go ahead and do this. Um, let me run this. So it's false. When one condition is false, both will turn out to be false. But when we have both to be true, I believe that's when we have, have it to be true. It, we have that to be true. So this would actually get it to be false. And also for um, A greater than three, which is false, and B um, greater than three, which is true, we get it true because for the operator, one of the conditions must be met. If one of the conditions is met, then we get a true, an output, an output which says true. Then when we negate the, um, the A equal to B sign, which is um, one, is one equal to five, um, the not operator will make us know that the not operator will tell us it's true because one is not equal to um, to five. That's why we have true there. Um, does that make sense? Sorry. Please, I can get feedback, and it would have been lovely if I could get feedback. Please let's interact. So A is not equal to B. That's why it's false. So if we negate um, no, the not operator for if we use the not operator on force, it to turn to be turn true. Turn true. Yeah, so that's why we have to loading. That's why we have um right to be false. Then we are going into one of the verbs in high divast, which is the future function. Um a brief overview of what filter does. Filter allows one to pick certain rows. That's observation. And filter picks the rows with which evaluate to true for all criteria. The first argument to filter the data frame. The subsequent argument are the expressions. The um, expressions. Um, in our last class, we actually worked more on data visualization and um, we used the ggplot2 package. And for ggplot2, it's also takes in the um, data, um, the data frame argument as the first um, argument. The combine, comp combine comparison and logical operator on the column to select rows. So um, I don't know if you notice that when we check the dimension of flight, this is more than that of um, diamonds. I think it's more than that of diamonds because it, um, I think they made it so because they know we'll be working more on the transformation in this chapter. And we want us to actually have a hands um, with data that um, on um, picking out or featuring the data, we can select um, sizable um, part of the data where we can draw out insight, possibly answer some, say, business question or research questions, depending on what field um, or what um, discipline we are asking, um, we're asking some questions. So um, the next thing is, um, Get the column names. I think we've done this before. About 19 columns, and we have year, month, scheduled. Um, let's check what each of the columns represents. We use the question mark and the flights. Okay, that's running. Okay, I will be opening the I wish we could show. Can you see the um the pop-up page of the flight data? Can anyone see it? Sorry, is it 
Yes, yes. So, so can you see the pop-up page? Okay. Um, usage flight, okay. Use um, the NYC, NYC flight data set, NYC flight 13 data set. You can just call it as flight. The data frame has colons year, month, day, which represent the date of um, departure. The departure time, arrival time, but the actual departure and arrival time from at HMM, that's I think hours and minutes. And schedule departure time and arrival time. Um, local time zone, I think this is time zone. Um, actual delay and arrival delays in minutes. Negative time represent early departures and early arrivals. Carriers, that's two letter carrier observation. We we're told to see another um, metadata file or another um, data description file that tells us more about the carrier um, column. And also for flight, flight also rep flight represents the flight number. And tail number represents the plane tail number. And we're told to see planes for additional metadata. Then for the origin, DEST, D -E -S -T, that represents the origin and destination. We're told to see airports for additional metadata. Then air time, amount of time spent in the air, minute, distance, distance between airports in miles, hour, comma, minutes, the time of scheduled departure broken into hours and minutes. Time underscore hour, schedules, um, scheduled time, scheduled date and hour of the flight as, uh, as for POXIX, X6 um, date, along with origin, can be used to join flight data to weather data. Okay, okay. So we have the source um, to be the Bureau of Transport, Transportation Statistics. Okay, back to the cons our console. Okay. Um, now we're filtering the data. Now select flight for November. From November, what we're going to do here um, will just be first of all, we need to find out. We already know the colon names. Each colon, we have the year, the month, day, and the, the rest of it. Each of these, let's take a glimpse at the data and see what we, we, we have. So we know how to. Um, okay. Yes, so we have um, here to be integer months, integer, the day integer. So for the months, we found out that it is, let's find out how many levels we have for month. Sorry, I'm not, I'm using the base package. I think in um, Tidyverse, there should be a way to also check for levels. I think, I'm not sure. So let me just check the level for um, flights. Like, um, as a second column, okay. Oh, what happened? What did I do wrong? Uh, something seems wrong. I'm trying to check the number of levels so we could, um, see why we actually going to use 11 here. Okay, we're using 11 because 11th month in a year is November. Anybody wants to help, please? Like, we need to actually discuss. It's a discussion. I'm just the one presenting. I think you may have to specify the name of the colon itself, though. So if you want to use... Levels. Terms, okay. Okay. Let me, let me try it on my end here. Okay. Yeah, I think you might have to use... Okay. Oh, 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 that's true. If I was to use numbers, then I have to use the, um, the square bracket. Oh, you didn't get anything. The levels. Oh, because actually an integer, not a factor. True, true. Okay, it's actually an integer, not a factor. So we can actually make it a factor. We'll not assign that to... Um, we can actually just make it a factor, then just get levels. Then from there, we can know that we can get to the final that, okay, it's actually in 12 levels. That is the 12 months in a year. But I, you can, okay, now you see it's actually have 12 levels. 
And for these 12 levels, each level represents a month. And um, what I did was I just used the asset factor um, function to convert um, the column to a factor. And after that, I checked the levels. I, I hope this is, I hope I'm communicating. I would have loved that. Please. So um, let's just go on and filter. To filter, the first argument is flight. And for the month, we have 11, which is um, November, which represents November. November is the 11th month. And our data set, the dimension of our data set um, is 27,268 by 19. That is row times colon. So it shows that, um, and one interesting thing about um, tidyverse is data frames in tidyverse are in tables, like that's the special data frame for um, data frames in the tidyverse package or data set transformed by using the tidyverse package are in tables. So um, a table, a table tells you a seven, I was on 260 rows match the, match the criteria. So for the next um, chunk, we'll be filtering the flight from December. And on doing so, we, we're using the same um, procedure. The first argument, we found out that that's the data frame flight. And the next argument, we actually are using the logical operator, the logical operator, um, the equal, the equality logical operator, that's the equal to sign. And 12 is for December. So month is actually the colon presenting month. So we the 12th month in the year is actually December. And with that, we found out what we're getting the, the data for just for December, the flight for just December. The next chunk now, that would be select flights not from December. I think at this point, we'll be using the um, not operator as exclamation mark for two. So now it's still the same um, format, the filter function and the flight data, um, flight data set, then the column of months, then not equal to 12. Now we are saying not December. In running this, we have um, we have the data set here. To the next chunk, which um, at this point we're using the R operator. For the operator, one of the condition must one of the condition the operator um, we will get a true if one of the condition we get a return value of true if one of the condition is met. That's for the operator. The and operator want um, both conditions must be true to get the return value of um, of true. Now what we're doing here is we're selecting flight from November or December. So what happened here is we're getting both for the, the featuring the flight data sets, we're getting both for November and also um, December. And so because we can um, see the entire data set, somewhere down there, I think 100, we'll find that of um, um, December. Underneath. Is it, is, it, is it going to show actually November and December because of the all function? So I thought it was going to pick. pick uh, I think it's going to show both because if you look at it from what we've done so far, so good. November alone, we had a um, table of um, 27,268. And for December alone, we had a table of 2,835. I think if you add both together, you get the same thing that we got for um, November and December that we're using the all operator. Fantastic, thanks. Okay, so um, the next chunk, we say select flight from November or from the first day of any month. During this, we, or from the first day of any month, Oh, this seems kind of dicey. Flight to this first uh, argument, which is actually the data set. Then we have the uh, first condition. Month is um, equal to 11, that's November. Month is November. And the day of the month is um, the first day of the month. And what this does is um, for the first condition, the first condition is true. 
in the upper condition also is true. So we have a data set to, to be, um, yes, so we have a data set to return the one for all the months and also for the 11th month. I think that's what happened. I think so. So it's the power for the data set. For the data um for the table for the outputs i'll just um show that on my screen now i don't know if it's visible to everyone to see uh i can see thirty seven thousand three hundred and eighteen rows okay. okay okay can you okay 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 um what i saw here i can't find the 11th month here and it seems it only took just um, from the first month to the 10th month, then it excluded the 11th month. Yeah. Um, I don't know why this is so now. Can anybody help? Uh, oh. oh, I think I made a mistake on my end, actually. <laughs> okay. Let me try that again. Okay. It's just two of us in the call. We're, kind of, we're kind of getting the same thing though. Okay. So okay. I also okay. have 37,318. Um, okay. So, and I, I just looked through the entire data for the month. I found out that um, the month just asked from um, um, January to October, there's no November the data that was returned, the table that was returned. So I think what happened was... Well, I, I mean, if we think about it though, so every month is going to have at least a first day. <laughs> yes. Right? So I yes. think it's probably going to give every month. So from, from, from month one to month 12, um, then it should also give um, November. Yeah, I think from what you said, or should we assume, we can just assume, we have to actually find out what happened in November. Let's filter just November. We've done that before, but let's do it again. Maybe November and December for day one, there no flight recorded. Maybe that also happened. Maybe that's why it is false. And the only um, true condition that was met there was the output got returned. What do you think? Their flight from the flight of my end, though. <laughs> so I just filtered for November. I have oh, uh, that's not it. There's, there's actually the one for um, the month of um, November, actually. Mm -hmm. I wonder why this happened. Uh, I think it's filtering November, though, Pro probably because we're not seeing the entire data set. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just assume so. Let's assume so then. Okay, or should we then try to say, okay, let me equals to one, the entire data set, and see what happens. Let's yeah. get the same number of table. Mm -hmm. mm. No, we don't get, no, it's not the same. So, some. I mean, there, there was also a function that you, you had used earlier. So, a new function that I used earlier that kind of summarized the entire data set. So, why don't we start off with that function first? I don't know what you mean. The as dot factor, the as dot factor function. Not, not, not that. Uh, it's like it's like a summary function, something like that, um, that you had used earlier when you were doing the introductions. Sorry to take. You mean that. the glimpse function? Yeah, glimpse function, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. So, so maybe we now. try. Thanks for that. Maybe we try glimpse function, and you can probably see data. Um, Okay, flight. Okay. <laughs> I hope this is going to be right. Okay. It's out there. I think. I guess looking at the dimensions of the filtering just for November and filtering just for day equal one, the or I guess 
filtration or the filtering with the R condition, I think just gave us a dimension that was the sum of the two, I guess. Does that make sense? So I think if you used filter month equal equal one or day equal equal one, that it just gave you, um, you know, all of November and all the months that had the day equal one, when day was one, I guess. Oh, uh, when we did that, we actually didn't get for um, November. So oh, let me make this object then. Let me make it um, November and we want. Um, out, I think, yeah. So if you have that, an object November day one, uh, let's have a summary of that and see what we have there. Okay, that would be November, yes. Okay, the yes, the thing, the month. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think we have, yes, months. We have um, January there. That's one. The minimum um, month is one. Then we have the median to be 11. And that's because, okay, we have, we have 11 there. And we also have um, 12 as the maximum. So I think we have the entire thing there. Like we have um, from just like, I don't know who was the lady who spoke last. So I, I didn't get the name. I you know spoke because I it was, it was Brenda. Sorry. It was Brenda. Okay. Brenda. Okay, so um I think we have January, February, March till December. I think we can move on. And I think doing this, we have actually solved some questions and we've actually been in with the data in a way. And I think it's it's fun. It's fun. Though we've not covered so much as I, I saw from the other from the previous quote. Oh, select fly from November the first. Okay, now what we are doing now is um, we're using the same function filter and flight, the flight data set, the first argument, then the month is November, then the first day. Now we're using the and operator. And for the and operator, um both conditions must, must be met for the and operator to return a true um an output of the output true. So for this, I think um, our data set will only give us for both November and also for the ones in November. And you can see that the data set is actually small. It's just um, 986 rows and 19 um, columns. So let's go to the next. Okay, let's go to the next thing. If you provide multiple comma separate um, expression, PPR will automatically use and combine the expression. So that's like a shortcut. So in case you don't want to use the and operator, you can actually use um, comma. Go to select right from November the 1st. We've actually done this before. And um, the player function does not change the original data. To save the result from a function, you need to assign the result to the object. And that's what we did the other time. We're trying to find out um, what what really went wrong was November included in the data um, in the table that was returned when we were using the, um, the R operator for the month of um, the month of the month equal equal to eleven. The R operator then we were saying day is equals to one. We didn't get um, we got something and we we're trying to find out if December was included and if November the whole the entire month of November was was included and. Um, we found out to make this um to, to do this in another way using the we can do this another way using the um the comma um comma separated expression. Now DPR function do not change the original um, data set, but um, to save the result from a function, you need to assign the result to an object. We assign that object November underscore day one. Let me scroll back so that we can just see that. This is it here. This is what I'm trying to say. Initially, this when we had this, it was not saved in our environment um, in here. But we have it saved here now as November, let's call day one, because we had um, assigned it to an object. Okay, I just found out that several people have actually been commenting on the chat. So there was no way I could check the chats and also 
So um, I guess we'll, we've been saying minute. something, or I've been saying something. It's fine. And, um, no okay, so um, next chunk that and that um, particular function and um, particular function. Okay, I think I've mentioned that. Um, okay, we're giving an example here. November one, the signed um, future flights in month, the eleventh month, and also the first day assigned it to November one. Also was done here, and we already um, understand that Ma would be seen as the end operator. That's what happened here. So it's at selected just November first um, flight that took place on November first. So what's the, um, the function n row tells us the number of rows, and the function um, n colon tells us number of colons. And so I think we are trying to come. We're trying to compare the um, number of rows for November first flight, and also the number of rows for the entire flight for the year 2013. And to the next next um, chapter will be the missing value. The missing value, we um, oftentimes row will not have bit. Those will not have data for certain colon. In spreadsheet, CSV, have separated value, CSV is comma separated value, the cells will be blank. In our data frames, the missing value are represented as any, meaning not available. And um, there's also something else, I think that one is NEN, as um, not a number. Um, so both of them are actually different. And for NA, um, Pressures with NA will return NA. So whatever you do with NA always returns um, NA. So NA greater than five will still return NA and just run everything there. So we all see together. So no matter what you do with NA, it still returns um, NA. Check if value is missing, use is dot NA. That's another function in, um, in R. And um, interestingly enough, you could run, use this function, you could run this function on the flight data set. And if we run it on the flight data set to just print the um the to print either true or false. If we try that lights. Okay, and we have about um three hundred thousand times. Yeah, this is it false, 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 and Let's say we are playing with, let's, let's say we are analyzing a very, very, this is actually a large data set. There's no way we'll be able to know um, where the missing values are. So sometimes we might just need to um, run another um, function to help the is dot any function. And that would be, I think, I think it's some, some, so we still see this when we get to um, some part of the, is it some? I think it's some, it's not, this is some. So to run some, Sums all the number of um, you know, true is actually one and false is actually zero. So it converts true to one, then false is zero. So it adds up all the ones. So when we add up all the missing values, we have 46,595. So by default, filter excludes NA. Now the filter function excludes any values. To, in to include any values, you must add an expression. Table is a tidy vast version of a data frame. I think I've mentioned this earlier. People have some extra functions that normal data frames do not have. So let's explore that. Now we are going to okay. The next instruction is create a table with a column named x with three values. So to do that, we would be using the function table, and x is the the column. That means if we actually want to add other columns, I think we just use a comma separated um, just a comma separation, then we continue to add more columns. Let me just run this, and we have our table. So our table is just a colon, um, a colon by um, column. Okay, that's three rows by one column. Okay, so let's let me go to the next thing. And um, what's the next thing down there? Um, sorry. Uh, okay, select rows with values greater than one. So now we are going to filter um, the data frame. And um, we all, we, we, now we are, we are familiar with the fact that um, the filter function 
first argument is the data frame followed by the, um, the, the column and then, then the logical operator then we decide what we want to do there so select rows with values greater than one so x greater than one because x is the only column in the data frame df so when we do that we get just um p then if we want to include um, the missing value we say okay filter um data frame but this time around um is there a missing value in x which we know is true or x greater than one we know that um, x, um one one could one um row in x is actually greater than one so both um conditions are true so what then does it print out it's just three again but then um set rows with na so now it actually will select the na um rule to include the na rule because that condition is met that condition is actually um true okay um the next chunk of the next um, chapter now arrange rows with the arrange function arrange function changes the order of the rules the first argument okay. I, I think i think it might be difficult for us to actually go into the arrange function now because i think we are probably i have maybe two more minutes but i have okay. a quick suggestion though okay, so no problem. why don't we why don't you read up arrange function and the select function ourselves then we start next week meeting from the mutate function so that we can close up on chapter five and chapter six next week does that make any sense so so we could read we could read up a range function and select function ourselves. Guys, does that make any sense? That sounds that sounds good to me. Fantastic. Um, and Timmy, thank you, thank you very much, Matthew. I know this is perfect, man. This is this is good. Um, thank you for for continuing the same good work that I and started uh, two lessons ago. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, so we'll probably just come back again next week. Um, I, I think the, the, the time change issue kind of created a bit more, a lot of problems, but I think everybody's kind of settled now. It was 11 a.m. CDT. It's kind of like 8 p.m. EAT my time. I think I think West African time is a bit more different. Uh, but thank you guys very much for, for your time. Thank you very much, Matthew. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, next week then. Thank you. Thank you.